What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Married to Reality. I'm your co-host, John, here with my wife and co-host. At the end of this episode, she said she wished there was a sixth part. She's a crazy person. (laughs) It's the one and only Teresa. Hello, everyone. How's everyone doing? Exhausted. Exhausted? I wish there was a sixth part, but... I wish the fifth part was better. Yeah. I wish the sixth part was expanding upon Michael and Angela. Tell us more. Tell yeah. us tell us all the deeds. I also feel like maybe the the senior level editors quit in the midst of editing this. They're they're at part three. Maybe they're starting part four and they're like, you know what? Enough is enough. Because <laughs> the episode or Part five made no sense. No sense. I'm with you. Let's do an hour and a half of the chronological tell all. And then let's also just also at the end, just go back and be like, oh, you know what? Actually, we missed a few things. Not even not even at the end. I don't even know when it was. I'm so 50 minutes in. I'm so discombobulated. It was just like, oh, um, we also forgot we did this lie detector test. Uh, and, and talked about some other things. So let's wedge that back in there. Yeah, I don't get it. Why wouldn't you just add it, sprinkle it throughout the tell where it belongs? Naturally, yeah. Yeah. They were like, well, back on day two. It's like, it's four days in now. I don't understand yeah. why we're going back. It made no sense. And it wasn't that juicy. Where It, it was wasn't. Like, let's, let's save this to the end I because know. this is going to be good. It was a whole lot of nothing. Yeah, I was like, Ashley has a beef with Alex. He's like, oh, my God. Okay, Alex, he made a hand gesture that Ashley misunderstood. Yeah, and then I was like, oh, they're going to ask Jasmine if she slept with Dane the night before she came to the States. No. Like, there was just nothing. I know. But I five, know. Five parts. It, it was starting to feel like maths, where it's just I like, know. where are they now? Whoa. Where did they go? Oh, here they are. They're back. No, nope, we lost track of them. It's like, just end it. Just let's end this thing already. Yeah, I'm with you. I think four parts would it's, have been better. I think four parts is still too much. I think you no. give me a, you give me a, a solid two part tell all. No. Kick it old school. Not give enough. Me a solid two part tell all. Not enough. Four part would be okay. I, I would be happy with four, solid four. The fifth one was a little unnecessary. That is utterly insane that you think four parts is necessary. Absolutely. Listen, so let, we'll talk about it. Let's yeah. not give it all away. <sighs> no. Okay. All right. Before we talk about it, real quick, a little business. We are talking about another 90 day favorite on Patreon and Supercast. Oh, yeah. Talking about the other way. whole lot of characters on that season oh yeah and that. some of them are stirring the pot on social media oh, that's well all right well hold your horses Teresa. but yes we're talking about it the other way over on patreon and supercast if you want to hear our thoughts our unfiltered thoughts because it is a patreon and supercast podcast if you want to hear those oh what we really think well yeah Teresa and john behind the paywall <laughs> if you want if you want to hear that i think we're pretty honest no matter no matter what. True. True. But <laughs> come on, I'm trying to stir up a little Ooh, okay, excitement. Okay, guys, behind yeah. the paywall. Woo. Um, <laughs> if you want to hear that, it's Patreon and Supercast. Patreon.com slash Married to Reality. Married to Reality at Supercast.com. The other way starts at the Cousins Club level. That's audio only. Family Affair gets you a video of that podcast plus a monthly bonus. There's also a chat feature on Patreon. It's all ad free. It's business free. There's none of this. It's just straight to the meat. Check it out. Yeah, join and I think you'll uh, think you'll enjoy it. Yeah, for sure. All right. That's Patreon and Supercast. Also make sure you're following us on Instagram at Married to Reality Pod. Mostly because that's where we get to chat with you guys. Absolutely. We try we to be act oh sorry. <laughs> we love it. Yeah. Oh. Um, I was gonna say we try to be active on Instagram when we can be, but we really we just like chatting with you guys. We do. That's what we do over there. Also, make sure you're following the podcast wherever you're listening. It's so easy to do. Just look down and smash that follow button. Guys, smash it like it's as hard as this entire season. All right. That's my always my final as hard as. And you're very right. Because it was a good season. It was a solid season. A lot of drama. Hot season. 
It was great. All right. Smash is as hot as this season. And last but not least, if you haven't left a review, you guys know we're suckers for love. It is the wind in our sails. It is the fuel in this podcast. So if you haven't left a review, if you could, it would make our day, make our week. And if it's a five-star review, we'll read it on this podcast right here. Do you have any? Teresa, I got one I would love to read. Let's hear it. This one comes to us from our friend Cindy B. Wisconsin. Hello, Cindy B. Wisconsin. Five stars titled it. A Great Listen. They write wonderful and fun 90 day and other reality TV podcast. John and Teresa are amazing and give great insight being an international couple. Oh. Wonderful banter between them. Oh. Look at that. I love it. Fun fact. I was told that my accent sounds like I am from Wisconsin. So it's my fellow Wisconsinian. No. Oh. <laughs> Who told you that? Someone who's never been to Wisconsin? No. Remember we went to Kentucky. Yeah. And we, had that, we went to that bourbon bar mm -hmm. at Bardstown, and the bartender said, oh, where are you from? Wisconsin? Yeah. Yeah, no, and I said, almost. <laughs> that, check, that checks out. Someone who had been drinking a lot of whiskey. <laughs> that. That I, take, I took it seriously. And sometimes I tell people that I might sound, I might have an accent if they are wondering. It's probably because it's Wisconsin. Sure. <laughs> all right. Go Packers. A beautiful review. Beautiful review. Yeah. Thank you so much for all the love. Thank you, Cindy. All right. That's the business. What do you say? What do you say we do a little 90 day, by the way? Let's hear it because I tried to help you. You always do. And our friends, our friends really do help me. But uh, this one I, I came across on my own. You're going to maybe take credit for one of these. But this first one. Okay, this is a, by yourself. This is, a scoop. this is a scoop I picked up on my own. By the way, number one, Stephen and Olga have called it quits again. Were they broken up before? Yeah, but they have like two kids now. They do have kids. So, when's the when's the last time you think they broke up? They broke up before the kids, or oh, okay, I think either before or a little after they did break up for a little bit and they got back together, but okay. it's been a while. Cause this story first broke a few days ago. So, all right, this is, this is still the most recent breakup. Okay. This one seems final. Steven shared on Instagram. He's, de he's decided. Okay. He, he wrote, I've decided to put an end to our relationship and put our children first. Olga is a great mom, but I couldn't be in our relationship anymore. Hmm. I'm trying to read between the lines Yeah, here. confusing. He added, there's obviously more context and I'll share it in time when I'm ready. This seems like a, a lover scorned. Like, what does that mean? Maybe Olga stepped out on him. Maybe Olga. So Olga always wanted to move to New York City, right? And then we yeah, saw they them. they did. And we saw them move to New York. And so she seems like someone with big dreams and she's chasing her dreams and Maybe she put Steven on the back burner. This is all speculation. Okay. But he seems a little hurt. Like he's mm. like, I've decided to put an end to our relationship. When I'm ready, I'll share. I can't be in this relationship anymore. It sounds like she may have done something to upset him. He gets upset easily from what I remember. So. Very, you're very right. She, uh, she responded to a fan. Someone asked, oh, what's your relationship status? Are you with... Stephen and she said no we are not together new chapter hmm. she wrote new chapter who dis interesting yeah normally it's fine but I always feel bad for the children when things like this happen he says he sees them often which so he's makes it seem like Olga's got custody or the majority of the custody but yeah it sounds a little messy to me it sounds yeah. like, it doesn't sound like a clean break or like a ah, we grew apart type thing they're too young to grow apart. Nah. They can grow apart. True. They can grow well, apart. Well, good luck to them. Good luck as to them. As the kiddos are good. Exactly. All right. That's, by the way, number one. By the way, number two. And main reason I'm doing this story is to put a smile on my wife's face and give her continued vindication. The, the continued vindication <laughs> that she deserves because Statler... Uh, 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 is continuing to rack up enemies. Yeah, and the enemies are all the people we love. Yeah, you can tell a lot about a person by who they associate with, by yeah. who they surround themselves with, and by who they attack. 
and Statler is attacking Kenny and Armando. <gasps> okay. Yeah, just stay away from our boys. Yeah, the only bad thing you can say about Kenny and Armando is their dog's semi swell. They have a semi swell <laughs> dog. Okay. I think the dog passed away. Well, they got a new semi oh, okay. sweller. All right. That's about as bad as it gets with them. So Staller's been going on Instagram and going at Kenny and going at Armando because apparently Armando called her out on her delusions that she was the creator of behind the real world. I mean, big brother. I, I mean, the tell all mansion, right? She thinks she created this idea of like, let's get people together in a house. Uh. And Armando's like, not an original idea, not your idea. And now she's just losing her mind. Yeah. It's like a maps. Like, they all do it. Love is blind. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Statler is blind. <laughs> they, literally every reality show in the last decade Put and, people in the and house. More, puts the cast together in a house. Milf, Milf Manor. Milf Manor. Everyone's putting cast members in the house. Like, she thinks she invented it? Come on. Mm -hmm. So she's she's losing her mind. She's going scorched earth, too. She's not just like, come on, Armando, that's ridiculous. Everyone knows it's my idea. She's now coming out saying, I'm going to spill tea. I'm breaking my NDA. And basically all she said is, the show is scripted. Because sometimes we have to reshoot scenes or something like that. Mm. But she's trying to make this whole big thing. She goes on TikTok live and oh, I'm going to break my NDA. She doesn't say anything. Well, so, if she breaks her NDA, that, that means no more Statler for us, which I'm okay with. I'm kind of okay with that. Yeah. So. Give me Dempsey on the single life. Yeah. I In the van. Said. Yeah. Yeah. You know? I yeah, that. enough is enough. Like, she just stirs the pot, which I'm okay with stirring the pot, but picking a beef with everyone, literally, all these OG cast members that know what's up. She was on two, one and a half season, and she's already, like, on the same level as Small Ed. Yeah. When it comes to the most hated cast member, even Small Ed, people can tolerate him better than Statler. Yeah, and you lose a little bit of credit in my mind when... You choose, you actively choose to come back for a second season and then start talking shit. Yeah. It's like if you got into this mess, saw how TLC handled themselves, and then were like, you know what? This is crazy. I don't like it. Let me talk about it so people know. Okay. Maybe you have some credibility. If you go back for the paycheck and sign up a second time and then are like, you know what? No, I'm going to tell you guys the truth. I'm like, I don't, do I believe that? Because it clearly wasn't that bad the first time for you to go back a second time. Yeah. Either way, for someone who continues to claim she hates 90 Day, that's all she can talk about. All she can talk about. So let's see. We'll see if anything comes of it. I don't think she's going to win this case. No, she's not. And um, her saying like, oh, she's going to come up with her own version with some OG cast members. Like, who? Yeah. Who, like Larissa, who got kicked out of 90 Day, or who? 90 Day Ring Cam is what it's going to be called. <laughs> 90 Day Google Nest. <laughs> <laughs> or I can see maybe, not even Colt, I feel like he might be coming back. Maybe some of the other who just got into a beef with TLC, but then like, who yeah. cares? Yeah. We have such short, there are so many cast members in this universe we have such short-term memory that it'd be very hard for you to bring a cast member onto your Statler spinoff and for us to care about it because we're so focused on these new... Like you'd oh, have to, yeah. You'd have to bring back Daniel and Muhammad for anyone to be like, oh, shit, really? Like, I, I'm going to watch. Yeah, but they don't, they're, they're friends now, so like I don't care about it. But you know what it. I'm saying? It'd have yeah. to be like a name like that yeah. for me to care. If you're like, oh, we're bringing Steven and Olga, I'd be like, oh, whatever. Yeah, uh. You know, know, we're bringing Rebecca and Zia to be like, nah. Yeah. We're so inundated with these new cast members. Oh, for sure. You fall out of love so quick. So Guilty. Good luck to Staller. She's going to need it, I think. Yep, a little bit. All right. That is 90 Day, by the way. What do you say we do it? Let's talk about this final part. Part five, Sunday night, 90 Day Fiance, happily ever after. Question, question mark. mark. My main question is, why was this thing five parts? Uh, <laughs> season eight, episode 49,000. Uh, Love it. Tell all part five. But I'll, I'm with you. This one was unnecessary. We 
pick up where we left off with Lauren versus the world. Yes, the girls ganged up on Lauren. And unnecessarily. I'm not the biggest Lauren fan. I don't care either way. But their argument was such a non-argument that I can't help but side with Lauren. They literally had no ammunition in the chamber. Yeah, Sophie didn't. I feel like Thais could feel a certain way because of a comment that was made on the pillow talk. Thais has a beef with John, right? If Lauren sided with John over something, I can see Thais having an issue, right? They're all kind of wild. But why was Sophie so upset? I don't understand. Sophie was mad because she was looking at a healthy relationship and going, oh, why can't I have that? Like, that's what it seemed like to me. She was just jealous and angry that Lauren and Alexi could carry themselves like two adults and yeah. have a seemingly healthy, happy, and loving relationship. And there she is with Rob. And we know how toxic that is because Sophie's big claim, her, her main issues, you guys don't show anything bad. It's like, well, maybe there's not really anything bad to show. But she also said, well, don't give you shit. Well, that's on you. You should have given them shit. Why didn't you? Right. And Small Ed actually made a good point. It took five parts. And maybe that's why there was five parts. So finally, Small Ed could say <laughs> something somewhat intelligent. And he was like, all right, then, Sophie, ask her the questions that you want answered. If you're so upset that they didn't get asked any questions, why don't you ask them? Yeah. And all the ladies are just like, well, there aren't any questions. So shut up. Like then there's, yeah. then literally zip your mouth because that's why Sean didn't ask any questions because there were no questions to ask as you just said. Yeah, for sure. And Sophie's big issue is that, oh, you just get to do your segment. No one gave you shit. You get to leave. And Lauren says, we're not getting home until 1 a.m. We need to pick up our freaking kids. It's like, come on. Also, not to skip ahead too much, but it's kind of important in this context. I thought everyone was going back to the house for another night. They were going to go to sleep yes. and then wake up the next morning and have breakfast together and then take a bus to the airport. No, everyone no. left that same night exactly. anyways. So it's exactly. like they just beat everyone else to the airport chilies. Mm -hmm. You guys are going to be following along in like two or three hours. So I don't understand. Everyone is so obsessed in some for some strange reason with Lauren and Alexi and hating on them and giving them shit. But I don't see why. I don't know where it's coming from. Yeah. And Lauren says, like, we're not perfect. Like, I never said I was. And she never did. I can see how some people have an issue that they... It comes from what she says, from the context that they are a perfect couple I can understand how some people see it this way, but I mean, we all have issues. Everyone has issues. There's no perfect couple. So. Also, they had some issues this season. They did. Uh, nothing too toxic. Thank goodness, because they have three kids. And so they, they're not pretending they're perfect. There yeah. were issues. They were addressed on the tell all floor. There just wasn't like cheating accusations or green card scamming or money laundering or like, they Money like, laundering. Well, like Manuel. Oh. And, like, <laughs> they just had normal, everyday couple issues. Kind of. I mean, not many women do mommy's makeovers, but sure. And I think the big one big thing we all kind of thought was like, okay, maybe the mommy makeover was a little selfish of her because there was a lot that was put on Alexi, but... I'm going to spin it around. Alexi is dead. He should be able to do everything. She does it all the time. Mm -hmm. And if she wanted to do mommy makeover, well, by all means. I think it was maybe a little selfish because it was a lot of surgery that she, if she had any complications, yeah. that would be an issue. But she admitted it. She was like, you know what? Yeah, it was a, it was a little selfish yeah, that was a that was addressed. Yeah. Um, and so oh. I think there was nothing else you, can, you could really give them shit for besides this that she literally admitted. Yeah, so I don't know where that's all coming from, but it just seemed empty, and so they end up leaving. Yeah, Alex seems like well, just grab your suitcases and go. Like this is this is ridiculous. Yeah. Then Angela and Michael go and say goodbye. Nobody gave Angela shit for leaving. 
literally right after Lauren and Alexi left. Well, because nobody wanted to get beat up like Kobe almost did. True. But it was just a little telling that Angela and Michael like, all right, we're out too. Who also, Angela and Michael didn't spend as many nights in the mansion as Lauren and Alexi. One. Exactly. And they're like, we're out. And everyone's like, okay, like, bye, good luck. And Angela tells them, I made up my mind. I'm going to go to a lawyer. I'm going to get a divorce. We're getting the visa annulled. Well, Angela kept saying, I am getting my visa back. It's my visa. Mm -hmm. And Jasmine gets this well, she panic pays attack. I don't know if you heard, but she pays taxes. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, good for her. I mean, what, what do we, what do the rest of us do? Yeah. Uh, so pay taxes. Jasmine, exactly. Jasmine had a panic attack because saying she keeps saying it's her visa, but it's I feel like it's our visa. It's my visa. Of course it is. It's the immigrants' visa that the Americans sponsored them for, and they they in this case Angela decided to. So now it is Michael's visa, whether you like it or not. It's not yours because guess what? You as an American citizen don't need a visa. Exactly. So it's not your fucking visa. Jasmine overreacted because no one's taking her visa anywhere. I don't think Gino would. But this was crazy and Kobe didn't have it. He followed Angela and yeah. Keep telling Michael, like, Michael, it's your personal documents. Don't give it to her. Like, this is yours. And Angela did the classic getting in the face, which I hate because it scares me. Mm -hmm. But she did it to Kobe. And it was crazy. They kind of had to pull them apart because yeah. I was nervous. She's going to punch him. And that would be really bad because he wouldn't punch her back. But things would go down. I, I don't know if it's because of this, but... Michael is so calm. That's his greatest defense mechanism is that he can stay so calm. Yeah. And I think he has to because if he were to elevate, I could only imagine Angela would escalate things even more. But I feel like Kobe sees Michael just being so calm and is like, someone needs to stand up for yeah. you. And, and Kobe stood up for Michael and that set Angela off. But just to go back to the visa thing, I feel like Jasmine got emotional because she thinks this could happen to her. She's maybe nervous Gino would pull the visa. I think that's where the emotion came from. Not necessarily Angela going, oh, it's my visa. It's my, like, hmm. visa wouldn't give Angela a credit card, right? She's not getting a <laughs> visa. She's not getting a MasterCard, okay? <laughs> I think she's going, it's my visa. I'm going to pull it. I have the right to pull it. And Jasmine's thinking, well, Gina might do that to me. And she started picturing getting deported or whatnot, not being able to have her kids, Wanse, come to the state. So, like, that, I think, is where the emotion was coming from. Potentially, yeah. Yeah. Well, Angela, I don't think she's realizing this one thing. She's acting like this towards Michael on national TV. If she, and I think she tried to annul they can play one of these clips in the courtroom of this instant abuse. True, true. Like, people are going to carry Michael out on their shoulders and they're going to lock Angela up. <laughs> look, look at the GoFundMe. Yeah. I, sh I should go back and look at how like, much it is. Like she thinks that her doing all this, being aggressive, overreacting, is going to give her her visa bag. No, it's literally going to make Michael stay here. It's going to make it easier for him because she's... It's not even, oh, we need to obtain the documents. It's a public knowledge. Yeah. Anyone can go on TLC and play any video clip of them from the past couple of years. Yeah. Over $45,000 right now. What? For, oh. For dude. Michael's Ooh. Michael's legal battle. Michael's swimming in cash. Yeah. No, you're 100% right. Anyone would watch as we have, and it's exactly the reason we side with Michael. Anyone would watch an episode and go... Yeah, you'd have to be crazy to stay in this relationship. Yeah. You're not scamming. You are running for your life. Literally, and we're going to learn it at the end. Yeah. So that's basically it for the quote unquote tell all. Yeah. I think this is a good place to take a quick break. Okay. They take a break. They're going to head back to the mansion. But while they're on the bus ride to the mansion, well, let's take a quick break. Tell you about our sponsors for this episode. And we'll be back in a second. This episode is brought to you by Hormone Harmony. Ladies, let me tell you, Hormone 
hormone harmony is a game changer. This all-in-one hormonal support makes those pre-period days so much easier to handle. So much so that women all over are raving about it and for good reason. For those of you who are going through menopause or perimenopause, I hear you. Finding comfort in your body can be such a struggle. But here's some good news. If you're feeling like an innocent bystander in the path of a Hurricane Angela, Hormone Harmony can help. Hormone Harmony is not just for menopause. Any woman experiencing symptoms of hormonal changes can benefit from it. It contains science-backed herbal extracts called adaptogens, which help your body adapt to stressors like those chaotic hormonal changes we all face. Whether it's hot flashes, night sweats, raising thoughts, low moods, or poor sleep, Hormone Harmony has your back. And the best part? Happy Mammoth, the creator of Hormone Harmony, are dedicated to making our lives easier with science-backed quality ingredients. They make no compromises when it comes to quality and it truly shows. That's why a bottle of Hormone Harmony is sold every 24 seconds and there are over 17,000 glowing reviews from women who all say the same thing. They feel like themselves again. So here's the deal. For a limited time, you can get 15% of your entire first order at happymammoth.com. Just use the code MERIT at checkout. That's happymammoth.com and use the code MERIT for 15% off today. We'll have a link in the show notes, but one more time, head over to happymammoth.com and use the code MERIT at checkout for 15% off and start feeling like yourself again today. And we're back. Hello, Jonathan. Hello, Teresa. How's it going? Good. I could use a pickle back. Yeah, I've never had... I've had pickle juice with tequila. Yeah. But I've never had pickle juice with whiskey. Pickleback would be a great name for a Nickelback cover band. Ooh, Pickleback. Pickleback. Nice. Yeah. I mean... Nickel- Nickelback... That documentary that we watched? Ooh, we love Nickelback. Who doesn't? If you guys are rolling your eyes or saying you don't love Nickelback, you're lying. Exactly. People who say they hate Nickelback, they love Nickelback even more <laughs> than people who love Nickelback. Look at this photograph. It's just so good. The only thing I hate about Nickelback is that the lead singer lost the, the ramen hair. He cut his ramen hair. That was so significant. It was a signature look. Yeah. That's the only beef I have with Nickelback. Mm. The hair. Hey, it looks too normal The now. music's great. I love it. Fantastic. But yeah, there's, <laughs> a, there's a documentary. I think it's on Netflix. It is. It's a little bit older. Maybe a year or so, but they just... They just put it on Netflix. That's so good. So should, good. should watch it again. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew they were like brothers and cousins? Like they're all family. Yeah. They're like Kelly family. What a talented family. Who? Kelly family. I feel like you've told me about the Kelly family yeah, before. Yeah, the Germans with long hair. Uh, they have schnitzel hair? <laughs> what do they have? <laughs> Anyways, uh, Pickleback, great band, and uh, a fine drink. Yeah. I drink pickle juice if I'm super thirsty. I love pickle juice. I'll just open up the jar and just... I love it too. Not with whiskey. I love whiskey. I love pickle juice. That just seems like I'm going to puke. It seems like a dare. Like that, it must have, yeah. that drink must have started as a dare. I dare you to take a whiskey shot and a pickle shot. Yeah, again, it's good with tequila or vodka. I forgot which one I like. Shumbo Wamba doesn't even sing about that. <laughs> he takes a whiskey drink, he takes a pickle drink. Yeah. I don't know that song. Yes, you do. Do I? I get knocked down, but I get up again. Ooh, I like the song. All That's right. what they sing about? They sing about different drinks. Oh. <laughs> All right. We're in like killing time phase and we don't have time to kill. So let's okay. talk about Jasmine and Big Perk. Well, and- Liz Scooby and Pat are doing the pickleback shots because oh, yes. you missed it. Yeah. But yeah, Jasmine's chatting to Small Ad about Liz and Manuel, who for some reason, they were the only one taking a separate cap. Well, someone's got to, I guess. If I, Maybe it makes sense because Manuel doesn't speak English and so why sit in a van where everyone's only speaking English? True. Well here it got it got juicy for about ten seconds when Jasmine was like, Oh Manuel is texting me on the side on social media telling me to delete the conversation. Uh, I was leaning in. And then she says, But it's very innocent. He's just asking about a visa and a green card. Yeah. I was like 
Jasmine, are you the moderator? Are you the admin of a Paradise Woman <laughs> chat group? Yeah, this this went nowhere. But then we get to see the argument Ashley and Manuel are having in the car. And it's because Emmanuel said he's not sure he wants to stay here. And here's my big issue. And it's not a unique issue to this couple or this season. But Ashley, for whatever reason, has delayed the paperwork, right? The K-1 paperwork, she kind of hasn't made it her main focus. She goes to the gym for four hours, so she hasn't been able to file. If you're on a K-1 visa, which Manuel is, if you're... Getting a K-1 for your significant other. You should be so in love with that person that you're sprinting to get the paperwork done. Mm -hmm. I can't stand how many of these Americans bring over partners just to date them. Like, "Eh, we'll we'll figure it out if we want. It's a spousal visa, not a dating visa. Yeah. And just to date them, not realizing that. You delaying the green card means you're paying more on your own. You're responsible for more on your own because until they file for the green card and get the work permit, they can't do shit. Yeah. So it's like you are basically putting it on yourself instead of getting some help. These two, I think they they have some strange sexual chemistry. That's all There's no love. No, that's all. As the Black Eyed Peas so eloquently put it. Where's the love? Exactly. There is no love because when you love someone, you want to share everything with them. You're open. You don't have, you don't hide things from them. You don't have secrets. You don't steal money from them. Yeah. This is, they're just such a bad couple. They just need to let each other go. And one, I think one is about to, but just don't apply for a K-1 if you're still questioning. Yeah. Is this my person? Well, I think Ashley wants him to be. I think that's the issue. She wants him to be that person and he isn't. There are all these issues. So she's trying, but delaying things because she's waiting for him to become the person she wants him to be. But he's not going to. Like You need to accept people the way they are. If they want to change something, they can change on their own. But you can marry someone hoping they will change. No one will change for somebody else. They'll change for themselves. If they want to change, they'll change. Exactly. You you may be a positive influence in that change if they already want to change. I think there are certain things you can ask your spouse to change if things get into extremes. Like, let's say if you smoked and it bothered me so much, but I loved everything about you. I would ask you to stop smoking. You could ask me. You could ask me. But unless I want to stop. Correct. It's not going to happen. Correct. Same with like drinking. If I realize that you drink too much and I had an issue with it, I would ask you to stop. But same thing. It's on you. It's up to you. Yeah. And And then you would have to deal with the consequences if things went bad. But you can expect Manuel to just change and become exactly who she wants him to be because he's not going to. He's Manuel. Yeah, yeah. So Manuel then goes and talks to Sophie and Patrick and Kobe. And Sophie speaks pretty fluent Spanish. I don't know that we've heard her really speak Spanish up until But she grew up in Spain. We forgot about it. So yeah, yeah, she speaks Spanish. It makes sense. I mean, it seems like she's, her and her family have really been based in Spanish speaking countries because mom was in Mexico. Yeah. She grew up in Spain. So makes sense. And Manuel's big thing is, well, I helped Ashley fill out paperwork. I'm doing what I can and I'm not getting any credit for it. And that's just, this is a a bad place to be. If you're just looking for credit because you're helping at this point. Helping yourself. Helping yourself. Yeah. But also if you're in a relationship and you're looking for credit from your partner, you're in the wrong relationship. Like if I do the dishes and then I'm like looking around, like, why aren't you saying thank you? Where's my, where's my praise? It's like, I always say thank you for doing the dishes, but I'm not doing it for a thank you. I'm doing it because that's what a a partnership is. That's how a team works. Correct. Is that I do this, you do that. And that's how we get through life. Right. He seems like, what, why am I not getting credit or where's the credit? It's like, then you're, you're doing it for the wrong reason. Yeah. And Kobe kind of calls him out on it, taking Ashley's side, saying, she sacrificed a lot for you. I mean, what do you mean credit? 
Well, she also said, though, it seems like her priorities are the gym and not her husband. Sophie said. Seems well, if like- her husband is acting like Manuel, then I kind of understand. Sure. Here's the here's the thing that dawned on me this episode. Ashley was getting revenge body before the divorce. No, it's right? not the revenge body. I think she wanted to get healthier, I which know. I'm all for it. I know, but I I don't know. A lot of people, they break up, they divorce, then they get the revenge body. She was in this relationship. It was going south. She got revenge body. She probably started getting more attention because of it and then started thinking, oh, you know, I can upgrade from, from Manuel. And that's why she kind of pumped the brakes on the visa. I don't think so. All right, it's a hot take. Let me have a hot take. Yeah, you have a hot take. I think she's doing it for herself. She, Listen, working out does feel good. I don't work out as much as I should. <laughs> we should try it sometime. Yeah. And I do try it, but I do work out, but not again, not as much as I should, but it makes me feel good. When I work out, I feel better about myself, right? Yeah. So I, I'm sure that's what that's what drives Ashley. Yeah. So don't give her shit for working out. Oh, I'm not giving her shit at all. It's fantastic. I'm saying, was there an ulterior motive? Probably not, but maybe. Um, but the ulterior that she experienced, I think, is that... I'm getting maybe more attention and now maybe I I don't want to deal with this man because I have options. And so I'm going to slow down on processing this paperwork. I think she should just let him go. It's a hot take. It's a hot take. All right. We'll see. Uh, Gino then comes over and it's a broken record with them just talking about the lack of sex that he and Jasmine are having. No one understands why Gino just won't bang Jasmine. Yeah, but no one but... Sophie. Sophie gets it because Sophie says yeah. it's hard when the emotional connection is broken and you can not just bank someone no matter how hot they are. Yeah, of course. There's something called emotion. Correct. That, that goes into things. And Jasmine kind of gets in on this conversation. She's like, I'm tired of having to worry about Gino what about me? Because everyone's like, oh, do you know what's the issue? She's like, what about me? And she starts going off. Small Ed will not let her talk. Oh, and no. she starts to lose it. This, we were watching the prequel to a dateline. Like, <laughs> I see a kitchen knife in Jasmine's future. She oh, was yeah. going nuts. Well, Small Ed called her Angela, which is interesting. Oh, I This is how that. you know that Small Ed has no friends and has no, like, he sides, <laughs> he sides with, with whoever is around him, right? When Angela's around, he's bestie because he knows that Angela could, like, smack him once and he would go all the way through the ground and just ended up in China yeah. because that's it. But now Angela isn't there, right? So Smollett calls Jasmine Angela because she doesn't listen and doesn't doesn't let anyone talk. Mm. It's like, um, really, small. Your friend Angela. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what I thought watching this is if this is how Jasmine acts in a room full of people and a camera crew, mm. cameras, imagine how she acts in private. Like you start, you start to see Gino's point where you're like, I can't bang this woman. Like there was 20 people in that house, lights, cameras, and production. And this is how she's behaving. You don't think she's 10 times worse when it's just Gino and her? Probably. It's probably way worse. Probably. But she's spiraling. She's literally having a panic attack once again, crying, yelling, walks off, followed by all the girls. Because the girls really yeah. bonded. Yeah. And Rob gives Gino some advice. Give her a hug. Comfort her. That's how I do it. That's how you get through the day. That's Yikes. where that's where they're at. That's such a miserable place to be, a miserable way to live, is trying to get through the day with your wife. Don't get through the day. Get out of the relationship. That's exactly. what you need to that's what you need to do. Exactly. Whew. So then we see Sophie and Jasmine and they're trying to empathize. And this is where Sophie says, yeah, Rob's hot, but can't bang just because he's hot. Right. Yeah. She's trying to explain to Jasmine and Jasmine says, you know, 
I'll give Gina four weeks to win me back. Yeah, one month. Let's see. Yeah, clock starts now. Yeah, and we see a little convo that where Smollett calls him and lists problem solver. It's like, where have you been, Smollett, the past couple of months? Let's hate <laughs> your guts. No, when he was saying men are problem solvers? No, him and Liz are problem solvers. Oh. Like, he sees them now because they somehow became a little friendly that they went, he forgot about all the shit he put her through, saying they solve problems because they help other couples. Ugh. Small ad. Ugh. Um, and then Rob and Sophie, they have a little one-on-one in their room. And it's interesting because apparently Rob is taking some steps to try to better himself and better this relationship. And they seem like authentic, real steps because he wasn't waving them in anyone's face. He wasn't trying to say, look at me, look what I'm doing. He was going about his business, going to therapy, yeah, trying to work on himself, says, we need help, Sophie. Uh, what do you think about us going to couples therapy? You know, on the previous season, everybody hated Rob. And on this season... He redeemed himself. I'm not saying Ugh. entirely. Taylor's is all this time for 90 Day Fiance, yeah. though. I'm not saying entirely because he did talk to other women. He did cheat. He did do other stuff. So I'm not saying Grob is a saint. He's not. But he's been trying and Sophie wants him to try yet ignores him. Mm. And so she needs to let him go because he wanted to leave and she didn't want to let him, right? She always... Right cries and all this and he's like okay let's try again they can't live like this no but she does say she'll do whatever if rob is willing i'll, I'll do whatever and so i think they're gonna do couples therapy well, or the last wink, res- wink. the mm-hmm. last resort and they will but let's see if it if they can fix it yeah someone else who may be appearing on last resort or the single life gino and jasmine <laughs> this gets interesting because they just had this blow up. Jazz was like, I didn't mean to yell, but I'm hurt. I'm frustrated. I'm tired of fighting. Gino's like, I'm tired too. And Jasmine has an idea. Okay. Rob's idea was let me go to therapy. Let me work on myself. Then maybe we can come together and be stronger. Jasmine's idea. Maybe if we limit the time we spend together, it'll keep us from fighting. She basically said, we should separate oh. for a little bit, not break up. Oh. But I want you to try to win me back. Let me, let me. Go bar- on dates. Let me borrow a word from our friend Corona from the other way. Uh, this is a soft breakup, if you will. This is a, <laughs> this is what I would call a soft breakup. Yeah. This is, this is one foot out the door. Oh yeah. I don't like it at all. Because I think this is Jasmine's way of separating. Maybe she's got another guy waiting in the wings. Maybe not. Maybe she'll find one. But I I don't think she wants to break up because she wants the green card. So this is her soft breakup. This is her, well, I don't want to live with you while I wait for my green card. But I can't break up with you because then I won't get my green card. So maybe if we just limit the time we spend together, we'll stop fighting. Not a good idea. No, just break up or don't. If you're going to be together, be together. Yeah. But this is where it ends. I was like, wait, what? All of a sudden, everyone's saying goodbye, taking group selfies, looking back at the time spent at the villa and the friends (laughs) they've made. Yeah, and I'm like, wait, 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 wait. So you guys got all up in arms about Lauren and Alexi for leaving, but you guys basically just had to go back, pick up your bags, and now you're leaving too. Literally. Crazy. They got a few extra shots so they don't have to pay for the bar at the airport. True. But True. That's about it. Yeah, that was it. Everyone starts leaving one by one, like the real world house. You hear that, Statler? There's a show uh, that <laughs> came out about 30 years ago called The Real World, where a lot of people lived together with cameras and they filmed it and it was interesting and spicy and they drank. And then at the end, they leave one by one and everyone says goodbye. This is what we have happening here. Literally. Small Ed wants to be friends with Liz, wants to be in her life. Why? I, I thought they were going to make out. Yeah, but Liz doesn't want him to. Liz says, this is it. I don't want to see him anymore. I have my man. I think she, and she says it. At least she admits it. She's, I'm not in love with him, but there will always be feelings. Yeah. yeah. So 
she needs to move on. He needs to stop being a moron because, bro, you called off the wedding. Mm -hmm. You didn't even tell her. <laughs> like, what are you talking? You want to be in her life for what? So she can stay miserable? Yeah. No. But then we get no, Manuel. No, miserable. 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 Well, pan panting. Miserable. <laughs> that would describe, because I felt bad for Liz, even though it's, Obviously, she got herself into a relationship, but she what looked, Small uh, Ed did to her was awful. She looked miserable for the last oh my gosh two seasons. She looks much better now, like happy, like yeah. Being happy changes your look for sure. And then we get this Manuel video cam. This was worth it for me. This, yeah, this was worth a part five because this is what needs to happen. This made my soul happy. And he wants to leave. He wants to leave. And he's like, he tells the camera, I want to go. I haven't told Ashley, but I would like to leave. And then he starts getting emotional. And it's the first time in like 40 episodes I've ever felt anything for him. But he's like, I may only be able to make $100 a week back home, but at least I can help my family. But he said, yeah, but it's going to be better than washing Ashley's dishes. Yeah. Yeah. Which, I honestly, if Ashley wanted him here... She should have applied for the green card sooner. But if he wanted to truly be with her, he should have been there for her, share shit with her, yeah. tell her about oh, yeah. his family. Like this relationship is so broken because yeah, and she admits it. She's like, yeah, I probably should have applied sooner. <laughs> yeah, no, they're but both now morons. he's saying, oh, I don't want to sit around and wash her dishes. It's like, well, you're doing it because you did something else to her that she kept hitting breaks for the, this whole thing is just messed no, up. No, they were both completely at fault. There was yeah. no, there was no one culprit. No. They're both that fall. So you think it's over. Just when yeah. you, think, you, you think the tell all is over, you check your watch. You go, wait a minute. There's still like another like 30 minutes left of this thing. They go, the tell all tells more. You're like, huh? The tell all couples tell more. The, the, the tell all couples tell more. I'm like, well, you guys didn't tell me anything for the last hour. What more is there to tell? Then we go back on set. But oh, and then the the way they positioned it, they're like, in this segment, we'll show never before seen moments. It's like everything was never before seen, <laughs> right? Like that's, we just watched never before seen moments. Now you're like, we're gonna show you never before seen moments. You should have just put it in with the rest of the episode, people. Yeah. So we see this. It was I don't know day one or two or three. Who knows? <laughs> this poly polygraph technician comes in. And the idea was that everyone's going to write a question on a piece of paper to any cast member. And it's going to be anonymous. And Jasmine says, can I, can I ask about you, you know? Here's actually, I think, why they put it at the end. Because it, it wasn't good. It, it would have been good if everyone did get strapped in. Like mm -hmm. that would have been a segment. So the fact that only Jasmine got strapped, yeah. they couldn't really do it in the in the meat of the episode because it's like, and now the polygraph. And it's like, wait, just one person did it? Yeah. So maybe that's why they put it at the end. But it was, eh. Yeah, because everyone was afraid because everyone has shit to hide, obviously. So the idea was that whoever had questions about themselves would get strapped in if they were willing. So... Gino first not willing nope so then Jasmine she's game so she got four questions she got three real one to prove that it was all true except I'm not a expert here but I've watched enough Dateline uh, so I know a little bit about polygraphs John the polygrapher I don't know what his name is <laughs> um, the lie detector operator he didn't even get a baseline he just jumped right in to the first yeah. question. It's like, how do you know she's lying if you didn't even get a baseline? Exactly. So question one was, are you attracted to Gino? She yes. answered yes, and it was the truth. Did you cheat with Dane the night before you left for the U.S.? Answer is no, and it's correct. Do you plan to leave Gino? The answer <laughs> is no, and it's correct. And then the fourth question to prove it says, do you think your boobs are too big? She says yes. And that was a lie. And yeah. Jasmine says, yeah, I want them bigger. Hilarious. So, all right. But Gino is happy. Yeah, it was, I guess, reassuring for Gino. She came back and he planted a big one on those lips. Well, next one we have Sophie. She passes. 
A list passes, and we have when you no say pa- further question. When you say passes, though, gas? No, no. on the questions. There is a, um, on, on the being being I'm, strapped right. in. They didn't pass the polygraph. No, they, no, no. They, no. Pa- they said no. I don't want. It. Yeah, I'll pass. I yeah, don't want I'll pass. Take- yeah. Yeah, Jasmine was the only one to take it. Yeah, so it was like, okay, you hyped us up, and she got all the answers correct, and yeah. Okay. So then we're like, all right, well, what else? Do you guys have in store for us? Day one, the drama between Alexi and Ashley over a hand gesture. Oh, it's like, okay, I'm leaning in. What, did he do like a little jerk off hand gesture? Did he do the middle finger? The middle finger, that's what I thought. What did he do? What did, did he do the little magic trick where it looks like your thumb is sawed off? Like, what did he do? <laughs> the I got your nose. Tell me. <laughs> <laughs> um, apparently, while the tell all was happening... People were going at it. Uh, It was Gino's segment, Gino and Jasmine going at it. And Ashley tried to jump in and share her thoughts. And Alexi gave her a, hold on, let them finish. And that was it. Ashley Ashley couldn't handle it. Because Ashley thought he's telling her, shut up, don't speak. Yeah. Which in a way, I guess he was, but it it wasn't like, don't ever speak. It was just like, hold on, someone else is talking. Yeah. So, so that was that drama. And they squashed the beef at the mansion. Yep. And that was it. And then we have a little bit of Smollett and Liz. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is so dumb. So dumb. Smollett apparently carries like the wallet size photo of their engagement with him. Yeah. And Liz is, Liz is asking to keep the photo. Unless Why? she's unless she's gonna burn it or throw darts at it, there's no need to keep that, to keep that photo. Yes, but she says she's happy that she finally got the closure because she didn't get it before. And the, all the cast thinks that she's still in love with Small Ed and Jason is a rebound. Maybe, possibly. Maybe, yeah. Um, and kind of on that same thought, Patrick thought perv was trying to bang out liz one more time and he was like i could have closed i could have closed one more time but uh she wouldn't be able to handle it so i didn't small as please all right perv she said you have you have a tiny penis so oh yeah that's, that's why, why he, she didn't do the why. polygraph because she's like <laughs> i was afraid gonna ask me about his penis yeah yeah and then we see kobe and emily arguing over baby names yeah um, i feel bad for emily because she's so pregnant and you do Women that want to get pregnant, they do get emotional a little more. So I do feel bad for her because she's so extremely pregnant. Yeah. She's in New York City and all she wants is to pick a baby name. Yeah, Kobe's very stuck in his ways. So they agreed on a, a girl's name. They aren't agreeing on a boy's name. Here's the issue. That it's a boy and Kobe gets the name? Sort of. <laughs> They're literally getting into a heated argument. Over this, right? Like a lesser couple would not be able to withstand an argument such as this. But they luckily they're strong enough they can withstand it. It's a heated argument that potentially did not even need to happen if they found out the gender of the baby. Because they've settled on a girl's name. They're at odds on a boy's name. They're not finding out the gender, which totally understand. But if it was such a huge, huge issue, I would suggest... Maybe go find out the gender because you may be having a fight that you don't need to be having. Yeah. But either way, they end up naming the, the boy Adam. Atem. It's not Adam. It's Atem. Atem. Mm-hmm. Um, so. It's a cute baby. I think Emily maybe caved in or maybe she started liking it or yeah. there was a deeper meaning. Yeah. And then the moment we've all been waiting for. <laughs> Shortly after the tell, the producers received an update. And we see Angela self-filming in her car. Saying, is this three after the tell-all, Michael was home for about three to four days, and now he's gone. Mm-hmm. And then Michael is self-filming. And he's like... From an undisclosed from, location. Correct. All right. <laughs> he's like, hi, guys, this is Michael. It's like, we know. <laughs> we know. Uh, we donated to your GoFundMe. We know. Um, we did not. Just... FYI, I want to share. You don't need to. Everyone else did. Exactly. (laughs) I want to share my side of the story with you. After the tell, 
we went back home. And as usual, my wife, Angie, I love how he like talks just like we aren't deeply invested in his life. My <laughs> wife, Angela, um, she got angry. She started giving me attitude. She did. That doesn't sound like Angela. Really? <laughs> uh, so it got to the point I had to leave. She said she wanted to run errands. So when she did, I went to the closet, got my clothes, got my documents and left the house. I walked for about five <laughs> hours. I was tired. My feet were blistered. I was thirsty. I started hallucinating. It was a mirage. Then I went hand to hand with a dog. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> made it, finally made it to a bus station and got away. And he says, I'm here for the right reasons, but it wasn't how I expected things to be. I just want to move on with my life. And then we see Angela again saying, see you soon, Michael, either on a plane or in a courtroom. Ugh. How would you see him on a plane? Where are you guys going? Yeah, you guys are going to go to the <laughs> airport and see him off? You're going to see him in the courtroom when you, you're you going to get, a, what do you call what do you call it, a guilty for abuse. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I wouldn't go near a courtroom if I were you, Angela. Exactly. So, woo! Oof. We made it. Oof. We did. Oh, season eight, Happily Ever After, in the books. Wild. What a wild run. Wild run. A lot of ups and downs. Mm-hmm. Ins and outs. It was great. I enjoyed it. Too too many tell-alls, but other than that, solid season. Very solid season, but I'm excited for the new one. I'm a sucker for new couples. I'm a sucker for new stories, so I can't wait. B90, before the 90. Yes. Starts next week. Oof. And you can listen to our coverage right here. Right next week. Yeah, same bad time, same bad place. Exactly. All right. Well, hope you guys enjoyed this season. We enjoyed talking about it. Always. If you guys want to hear us talk about the other way, well, that's on Patreon and Supercast. Patreon.com slash Married to Reality. Married to Reality at Supercast.com. That coverage starts at the Cousins Club level. Mm -hmm. If you want to watch us do the podcast, that's the Family Affair level. It also comes... With a monthly bonus. Yes. On Patreon, there is a chat. It's mm -hmm. a chat room. It's fun. It's like the 90s. It's like AOL. We have a good time over there. It's ad-free. Patreon and Supercast is ad-free. Mm -hmm. And we do random bonuses once in a while. Maybe we'll talk about the Nickelback documentary. Maybe. Who knows? Who knows? So check it out. Patreon and Supercast. Also, make sure you're following us on Instagram at Married to Reality Pod. Call in. Let us know what you think of this season. We love talking to you guys over there. We do. Also, make sure you're following the podcast wherever you're listening. It's so easy to do. Just look down and smash that follow button. Guys, smash it like it's as hot as the beautiful review we got from our friend from Wisconsin. <laughs> Cindy B. Cindy B. Wisconsin. Thank you, Cindy. Beautiful, beautiful review. Thank you for all the love. Yes, thank you, Cindy. All right. That is it. What a season. Oof. When one door closes, another one opens, and this one's opening up into... Before the 90. Exactly. Can't wait. All right. Thank you guys for listening. Thank you guys for supporting. I've said it all. I've said it all. Means we'll talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.